once you have your Sedona dashboard and Sedona analytics system installed and set up, the first thing you're going to want to do is to get in there and see how it works and see what it is that you've got. So the first thing you have to do is you have to connect to Sedona Dashboard or Sedona Analytics. The, the point of entrance is always Sedona Dashboard. That is always the first thing you connect to. And there are two different ways to connect to it. One of them involves using this right here, okay, which is the Sedona Dashboard uh, connection in the um, tree. This can be turned on and off by user group. So if you have users that you do not want to have access to the dashboard at all, all you have to do is turn that off for their user group. It has its own setting. There is also a general setting for people. If you use internet or intranet for that matter, uh, a connection, you can go to the login page. The login page looks like this. And you use the username and password that you would use the same as uh, if you were uh, logging into Sedona Office. And much like the Sedona Office interface, you also can select here what company that you're going to connect to. And you have that information. You click log in, and it takes you to that first page. And so we're going to take a look at that first dashboard. OK. And let's make this big. So when you connect to your dashboard for the very first time, you will come up with this screen that says Add Panels. That's because you have no panels. Your dashboard is empty. Each dash dashboard is saved and is unique to the user. So seeing how this is the first time this user that I've created has gone and talked to his dashboard, the first thing he has to do is he has to select uh, some things to put on his dashboard. And there are a number of things here, and they come in different sizes uh, and types. For instance, some are charts, and some of them are, uh, we'll say, text only. And it all depends on what it is that you want your dashboard to look like. OK, so we're going to start with a couple of my favorites here. And we're going to add that. You can add them one at a time, or you can add them multiples, doing a couple at a time. So I'm going to add a couple of these in here, like this and this. OK, so I have added four panels to my dashboard. And now I'm going to close this interface. And we're going to see them appear in a moment on my panel. There they are. Notice that it puts them all in the corner pretty much. And this is where it can be a little bit tricky because of the way it's windowed and because of um, scrolling and whatnot, sometimes when you move around an item like this, it can cause your screen to scroll on you, and it can just be a royal pain. But just keep tweaking at it, and you'll get the idea. Some of them automatically adjust their size, and they have a minimum size. And you can just drag them around, put them where you want. And there you go. You have a dashboard. And if I were to close this dashboard right now, okay, I come back to Sedona Office. As soon as I launch this dashboard again through this or the login page, it will come up and it remembers exactly what I've done, except this one here resized itself slightly. Okay, exactly what I had set up and exactly what I had saved. To move a pan on. Uh, now, this right here says new tab. We want to change this tab name. We want to give it something more important, like uh, we'll call this, well, for lack of a better term, let's just call this operations. So I click on this gear icon and I choose rename tab, and I can put in here operations. Hit enter. And there it is. We've renamed the tab. If I want to add an additional panel that I haven't, and I said, oh, I want one more panel, I can also go back up to here, hit this, say Add Panels. And it brings me back to that same dialog that I had before. And we can see, for instance, let's add this panel. And in a moment, it'll pop up here. Sorry, I'm on 
a slow computer. But here is another panel that we just added. So as you can see, you can add and arrange your panels however you want. You can use them um, to create the information that you want to see. Every different employee can have different panels on their dashboard depending on what it is that they need to do. Now, <clears throat> this is a freeform layout. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add another tab. Okay, so we have the one tab here. You can have multiple tabs. So we're going to add a tab. Boom, here's a new tab because it's blank. It's immediately going to ask us for to add some panels. So we're going to add just a couple of things here. Uh, we'll add this aging one, we'll add that service activity, and we'll add this counts, okay? And uh, let's add this one right here. So now, again, on this new panel, we have a number of them. This time I, ch I chose smaller ones. For instance, this is the same RMR trending that we saw here. We'll let it catch up. That we saw here in the graph, except it's a text-only version, so it responds faster and it takes up less real estate. This can be important particularly when you get to uh, what I'm about to show you here, the ability to do, set up for mobile. Now, in this particular one, and in both of these um, tabs so far, we have them in what's called freeform. We can put them around, put them anywhere we want. But if you prefer, you can do this, and you can choose change layout. Right now it's set to freeform. But I can say I want it in a two-column format, side by side, equal spacing. Or I can have the left one bigger. Let's make the left one bigger so I can put some of the bigger stuff over there. Say done. And now, boom, there they go. It automatically put them into the two column. And I can drag stuff here into the other column. Try again. Yep, there it goes. And this is another short one. But I can make these into the two column situation that I want. here and there we go and that keeps it in a nice two column two column format or you can choose one column to have it in a single column if this is your preference in laying it out we prefer and the reason it defaults to um, to freeform is you don't have all this white space which you end up because these are all different sizes and shapes now we know how to make a column or excuse me make a tab and add to the tab how do we get rid of a tab? Okay, You say, yep, I like this one better. This is the one I want to keep. I want this guy to go away. Well, first I'll show you how to take out one panel. Because if you go to a panel and you say remove, and they'll say, are you sure? Okay, boom, it's gone. And if I want to remove the entire tab, I can go up here to this one, and I can say remove tab, are you sure? Yes, and in a second the tab will be gone. There we go. Like I say, I'm running the SQL Server, the web server, uh, client, everything on the same small machine for my demonstration here. On a full system, this is considerably faster, considerably faster. All right, so now that we've seen how to create tabs, how to set tabs into columns and whatnot, we've got some buttons at the top. What do these do? Well, the first one we have right here is transfer to the mobile Sedona dashboard. If we click on this, and it's going to come up a new one, it's going to ask us to add some activities again, and we'll add just one right for now. And basically, this again is in free form, but this one you should set up to be narrower because it's, going to, it's designed to be used with your mobile device. We do not, at this time, have the ability to automatically recognize what kind of a device that's coming in a future update, in which case, if you logged in with your smartphone, it would automatically take you to this set of tabs as opposed to the other set of tabs, which uh, your PC or your app, your uh, Mac would take you to that one. So um, these you want to set up, and usually set it to uh, to a single column and then do them stack so that they'll look good on your smartphone and all you got to do is scroll in one direction. 
So you have that. You can return back to the full dashboard here. And it remembers that. So it actually keeps both sets. So you can have one set of multiple tabs designed for when you're using a computer, another set of multiple tabs that are designed for when you're using a tablet or smartphone. All depends on how you want to set it up for your own use. The other one you have here is, the next one rather, is this customer info. This is designed for people that do a lot of customer um, service, customer interfacing. And so whether it be salesmen, techs, troubleshooters, whatever you have. And it brings you to this special one. There are no tabs here. But you can do things such as find a customer. We can find the customer by name, address, alarm account, or customer number. We're going to use name here because I'm going to type Smith in here. Smith. Find the customer. It gives us a list of customers. And I'm going to pick this guy right here. Click on his customer number. And there, and it fills in the customer. And here is the customer, and this is his basic uh, customer and bill to information for the customer. If you want to see his sites, you click here. He has but a single site, okay. And this is his site information, systems, which they didn't fill in very much of that. Uh, uh, no addresses and stuff. Oh, there's the address, okay. Uh, systems, how many systems they have. What recurring they have, the top part of this recurring shows you what their active recurring is. This shows you their recurring history so that you can say, oh, I see we already gave you a discount or whatever, or oh, I see you just got a raise. We can do something about that. So here's your recurring, current recurring, and recurring history. Invoices, these are all the invoices with the invoice memos, okay, and you can go through their entire invoice section. This is the ledger section, which is pretty much exactly like in the customer display in the Sedona Office client, except we've made it portable so that you can now access in the field here. And you can see you can go through it. Uh, this has paging invoked on it. So you can go, this one happens to be up to four pages in length. And you can go through the different pages, and you can see what activities they've had in order, etc. Then we have contacts. Well, we have contacts, but this customer doesn't. Then we have a list of service tickets. And this gives us a basic idea of what went on in the service ticket. But if we wanted to see the detail, because this is a common thing when we want to work with a customer with problems they're having in service, we can take a look at that by saying, I want this ticket number right here. Okay, And I click that, and nothing appeared to happen, except it filled in the ticket detail which shows you all of the dispatches, all of the notes, all of the things that happened on that ticket, um, well beyond what we could do you know, in a list, everything for a list. And if you, know, you made five trips out, there will be five rows of dispatches in there that you can see along with the notes of what the tech found and whatnot. So this is the customer um, info screen. And the reason that we crunch this down pretty tight here is our intent is that this will be available and that you can use this on either a smartphone or a tablet in the field when you're talking to a customer. All right. And when you're done with this, you just back arrow to get back to your dashboard. The final button is the one here that says Sedona Analytics. Sedona Analytics, again, if you have permissions for uh, any of the query builders, then you have the permission for analytics. We're going to take a very brief look at this because there's actually another video that explains that, but just so you can see the power that this tool has. And as you can see, you're already logged in, but you can immediately begin to create analysis 
you can actually create your own dashboard in here. They cannot be mixed, though. That dashboard and this dashboard cannot be put together, unfortunately. And then you can design full reports, which you can then send out to other people. But if we take a quick look at this uh, Analyze to see how you put together queries, you'll see that it, it's a lot of similarities to the query builders. For instance, here the first thing you're going to say is, oh, I'm doing a report that's based on the customer. So and it will make a quick chart. And that's all the further we're going into this, because there is another video. But I just wanted you to see a little bit, a little taste of what is in the analytics. Okay, So here's the analytics. And from there, you can choose fields and everything that you wish to do. Again, when you're done here, you know, back out of this, or you could just close the window. Um, as a matter of fact, you can just close the windows. And here we are, back to the dashboard. And again, the dashboard always remembers how you set it. One tab, two tabs, two sections, mobile, what have you. So there is your dashboard.